To continue our series in replication, we're going to go over network modes and actor roles. And we're going to be using the same code from our previous videos, so link to those will be in the description below. First, open up the project, and I'm just going to do two quick things. I'm going to click this Add New button, click New Folder, I'm going to name this Blueprints. I'm just going to drag my Coin Actor Blueprint to this new folder, I'm, I'll select Move here. And then I'm going to take this third person character in our map and I'm just going to delete it since we won't need it there. Now I've noticed with moving assets to different folders, we typically have to regenerate the Visual Studio files. So if I go to File Explorer where my project is located, you can see here that the blueprint is still here despite moving it to the blueprints folder. So to fix this, just delete it and then go back to your main projects folder and then right click your U project file and select generate visual studio project files and while that goes i just want to say that you need to do this because if you don't then the blueprint will actually reappear in the content folder in the file explorer despite you just deleting it so if we go back to the content folder you'll notice it's still gone and just to make sure close your project save everything and then go back to your main project folder and reopen the game once the game is reopened, you'll notice there's still no lingering references to the blueprint in the content folder. Even if we check our file explorer, it's no longer there. Now let's open Visual Studio by going to File, click Open Visual Studio. I already have Visual Studio open, and I'm just going to add one single line of code to our begin play function. So I'm just going to add it right here. It's a G Engine dash add on screen debug message parentheses negative one five point f f color double colon red f string double colon from int and then we're going to pass in here get net mode now all this is going to do it's just going to print a debug message on our screen indicating the network mode that we're currently in while calling this function. And you're gonna see an error here, that's because we need an include statement, so I'm just gonna add it to the top. We're just gonna be including engine.h. So just save that, right click your project, and select build. Make sure you have development editor and Win64 selected as well. Once that's finished, let's go back to the Unreal Engine editor, and we're gonna click to the right of this play button so that we can change our multiplayer options. So for a number of players, I'm gonna select one, and I'm gonna run this game as a dedicated server to show you guys. So if we click the play button, you'll notice that three and one are each printed out once. One represents the network mode for dedicated server, and three represents the network mode for a client. So this instance of the player, because we're playing on a dedicated server, this instance of the player exists on this client that we're looking at now and on a server. So the begin play function is called on both the server and the client. The begin play function is essentially called anywhere that has an instance of this player. Now, if we go back and we change the run dedicated server or if we check off the run dedicated server box and run our game as a single player game, you'll notice zero is printed out. That's because the network mode associated with zero is standalone. And if we now increase the number of players to let's say two and run the game, our game is now a listen server. And you'll notice three is printed out twice and two is printed out once. Three still represents the client network mode, but two represents the listen server network mode. Now the reason why three was printed out twice as well as two is printed out twice is because like we said before, the begin play function will call on anywhere that has an instance of a player. So let's take one player. So begin play function will call on both the non listen server client. So the client that's just a regular client, it's not acting as a server and it'll print out or it'll execute on the client that is acting as a listen server. So that'll explain why it prints out three and two at least once. Now we also have another instance of a character which exists again on both the client and the listen server. So that is why three and two are printed out again. Now if we go a little more complicated and 
click run dedicated server and run our game again, you'll notice that three is printed out four times and one is printed out twice. That is because we now have two clients and one dedicated server. All three of those have both these instances of these two players. So let's take one player. It's begin play is gonna be called on the dedicated server. So we'll print out one once, and then it has to print it has to execute on the two clients. So that explains at least printing out two threes and one one. Take that and just multiply it by two because we have another instance of a third person character that we have to call begin play on. The question then becomes, why does this matter? Why do we need to know these modes? It's just to give you an idea that there are functions that can be run either on the client side only, on the server side only, or both. So let's go back to the code and we're gonna go back to our begin play function and we're gonna comment this line out, but we're gonna copy and paste the line because we're going to put it somewhere else, specifically that on overlap begin method that we wrote in the last video. And I'm just going to put it at the very beginning of the method. I'm going to save this. And I'm going to right click the project and build. Once that's finished, let's go back to the Unreal Engine editor, make sure we have three players as well as run dedicated server checked off and play the game. Now, if I overlap with a coin with my character, you're gonna see three is printed out three times and one is printed out only once. That's because the server has its own instance of this player as well as the three clients. So since the server is separate from the three clients, you can't see it, but it has its own instance of this character and it's also calling the on overlap begin function for this character whenever it overlaps with something. And the same goes to each of the three clients that have their own copy of this player character. Now, if I run the game again, but without a dedicated server, so I'm gonna check this box off. So we're gonna run our game as a listen server. So now one of our clients is acting as the server. And when it overlaps with a coin actor, you're gonna see three is printed out twice and two is printed out once. The reason for this is now the server, which is indicated by network mode two, is tied with a client. So two is gonna be printed out once, which means the on overlapping in function is called on the client that's acting as a listen server. But since the other two clients also have their own copy of this uh, player character, they're also gonna call the on overlap begin function as well. Since this is a replication tutorial, you may be wondering why are we calling destroy actor so many times just to destroy this coin actor when we overlap with it? Think about it. We are calling on overlap begin on each client that has a copy of this player actor, as well as the server that has the original instance of this player. But if we have replication, we should only have to call destroy actor on the server and have that replicate the changes back to the clients. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's go to our code, specifically the on overlap begin function. And at the top here, we're just going to have an if statement and we're going to pass in has authority. Add some squiggly brackets and then let's cut the original code from before, paste it in here. Let's save and then right click the project and build. Once that's finished compiling, let's go back to the Unreal Engine editor. And before we play, make sure you have two players as well as a dedicated server. So let's play the game and overlap with a coin. And you'll notice that one, which represents the dedicated server network mode, is printed out once, which means the server has authoritative control, aka role authority, over this player actor, which in essence just means that the server originally spawned this actor, so it has the true original copy of this player character. But now you may be wondering why, why isn't the coin being destroyed? on both the clients. Well, currently, if we go to the coin actor blueprint, you'll notice that under the replication tab on the right, that the replicates flag is not checked off. So we need to check that off to set it to true. Now, if we save and compile and we play the game, if we overlap with a coin actor, now the coin actor is destroyed on both clients. The reason why this was happening is because before, when we didn't have the replicates flag set to true, the coin actor was only being destroyed on the server therefore the clients because they don't have role authority over this coin actor they they don't know what's going on to this coin on the server because they're not getting those changes via replication 
But now that we do have replication ticked off, we basically achieve the same effect before from calling destroy actor on both clients and the server in on overlap begin by now only calling destroy actor on on overlap begin only on the server. Let's go back to the code here and instead of printing out the network mode, I'm actually going to print out the role because I want to show you guys which role is associated with network authority in this case. So let's right click and build. So once that's finished compiling, let's play our game again. And this time when I overlap with the coin actor, you'll notice that three is printed out. And because now that we're printing out the role, three represents role authority, which basically means authoritative control over this actor. Now we saw before that the if has authority check returns true if this method is called on the server. That means the server has authoritative control over this actor. Why is that? It's just simply because this player actor was spawned on the server technically. Now, if you spawn an actor on the client side, then technically the client that spawned that actor would have authoritative control over that actor. And in that case, if you ran the if has authority check, it would actually return true when running on one of the clients, specifically the one that spawned the actor. I also want to point out that if the server does have authoritative control over an actor, aka role authority, then that means the clients usually have role simulated proxy in relation to that same actor, meaning that the clients have an instance copy of this player character, for example, and the only way they can get changes and updates to this character is through the server via replication, which is basically synonymous to saying that the clients are just simulating what the server sees of this actor. Now there's also another role called role autonomous proxy and we'll get into that later. To show the roles besides role authority, I just want to go back to the code and make some very small changes. So I'm going to add an else statement here to our if has authority check. And I'm going to copy and paste this add on screen debug message line. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to paste it in this else. And then I'm going to right click the project and build. Once that's finished compiling, let's go back to the editor and select number of players two and run dedicated server before playing the game. And I'm going to play the game and I'm going to overlap with this coin now. And you're going to see two numbers printed out. You're going to see a one and you're going to see a two. The one represents the simulated proxy role that we just talked about. Two, on the other hand, represents the autonomous proxy role, which is basically the same as simulated proxy, except it applies to the client that has local control over this player. So for, for example, client one would obviously be the client with the sim, uh, autonomous proxy role because it's not only simulating the changes to this player character, but it actually has control. It has local possession of this character. For example, I'm able to move it using, using my keyboard, using user input to control this character. Client two can't do anything to make uh, this player, this client one player move. To better show this, let's run the game again, but this time we're going to play with three players. So let's play the game again with three players. Now, if I overlap with a coin, you're going to see two ones print out and one two print out. This makes sense because two of the clients don't have local control over this client one player. So that's why two ones are printed out. They are purely simulating changes slash updates to this character via the server via replication. Whereas client one has a simul has a autonomous proxy role because it has that local control, not by the network of this player character. Now let's say we want something to only happen on the client instead of this event happening on the server and then replicating it to all of the clients. So we only want something to happen on the client that's currently controlling the character, the client that we see, the player sees. So let's go to our code and instead of this Ill else here, I'm gonna replace it with an else if, and I'm going to pass in is locally controlled. Now we've already confirmed that the server has authoritative control over the server. So if the server is, if it's not the server calling this method, if it's one of the clients, then it's going to go to this else if. Now the one that actually goes into the else if block and execute the code in it, it's going to be the client that has local control, not control on the network over this character. So just to test this, I'm gonna cut this code from the if has authority block and I'm just gonna paste it in here. So I'm gonna save that, I'm gonna right click and build. Once that's finished building, let's go back to our project. 
uh, make sure the same settings three players uh, dedicated server let's run our game I'm just gonna choose this client on the left here and watch closely as I overlap with this coin Pr two is print out which makes sense we discussed the automatic autonomous proxy role before it basically describes the client with local control over this player character but you may be wondering now why is this coin actor not being destroyed at all it's not even being destroyed on the client that overlap with the coin actor that's because the server has authoritative control so and the server is currently replicating the changes so since the server has the the true state quote unquote of the actual game and is replicating to the rest of the players if one client destroys this coin actor it'll just show up on the client end but on the server end the coin actor hasn't been destroyed so it's still going to replicate its version its state of the world to the rest of the client so you can destroy it on one client but if, if that actor that coin actor is set to replicate then it won't be destroyed on any of the clients so just to show this if we go to our coin actor blueprint again and this time we're going to go to the replication tab on the right and we're going to tick off the replicates flag save compile let's go back let's run the game again now you'll notice this client on the left if i if i overlap with this coin actor it will now destroy it only on client one and not on the other two clients as you see on the other two screens on the right the reason for this now is because the server has the true state of the world but it's not replicating this coin actor aspect of the world to the rest of the clients so on the server the coin actor may still be in that exact spot but the problem is the clients aren't getting that anymore because we ticked off that replicates flag so just for um, this project sake though i'm just going to tick it back to replicates now let's go back to the code uh, we proved that this really doesn't do anything this else if block so i'm just going to copy this code put it back into the if has authority block and i'm just going to get rid of the else if block that wraps up our coverage of network modes as well as actor roles so if you enjoyed this video please like comment and subscribe uh, we have links to our discord as well as our patreon in our description so please check those out and have a nice day